In this video, I will be demonstrating how a mini PCNL can be done uh, using a mid posterior calicial puncture. A 5 year old male child presented to us with uh, intermittent episodes of hematuria for the past one year and on evaluation he was diagnosed to be having a pelvic calculus of size 1.8 cm. His rest of the investigations were normal. So he was planned for right sided mini PCNL. This is the intraoperative fluoroscopy image. After placing a 4 French ureter catheter, you can see a small radio dense shadow seen in the region of the right kidney just uh, lateral to the ureter catheter. Now after uh, when once the RGP was done, uh, you can uh, clearly see the calyces here. The one which was pointed out here is the uh, mid anterior calyx which is generally seen more laterally. Generally the mid posterior calyx is not so clearly seen. So if at all you want to identify uh, mid posterior calyx you have to look for it. Generally these calyces are seen uh, more medially compared to the anterior calyx as shown in this uh, picture. Uh, as pointed by the arrow, you can see a small radio dense shadow which is seen slightly medial to the mid anterior calyx. So, this is the calyx which you have to puncture if at all you want to go for a mid posterior calyxal axis. Now, uh, this is a live image where you can see the same calyx which I am targeting. So, initially, when once I targeted this calyx, I found that the 12th rib was coming in the way. So, then I changed my angle slightly above the 12th rib, I went up and then I directed the uh, PCNL puncture needle to the site of that calyx. See, you can clearly see uh, the contrast in that calyx is emptying faster because it is a posterior calyx. The contrast is in a non-dependent position. So most of the times the contrast gets emptied down. So you have to inject the contrast repeatedly to identify this calyx. See again I am puncturing the same area. You can see the dense area. When now you can uh, see that uh, the needle tip which is just located at the tip of the calyx. Now I am rotating the CM to 30 degree and I am slightly guiding my needle into the kidney. Now you see it has got punctured now. Now when once the needle enters into the PCS, uh, you have to reconfirm your position. Just remove the uh, stylet and then you can see free flow of saline coming there. Now the advantage of this calyx uh, is that when once you pass the guide wire, uh, generally the guide wire goes into the ureter very easily uh, because it is generally giving a straightest path to the uh, pelvic ureteric junction. So now I am dilating the track. Uh, you can see I am using the uh, Alkan scannula. The, it was, uh, I am making sure that the tip of the cannula is just lying in the pelvis. You should not avoid the uh, cannula going too much onto the medial because it, can, it might injure the pelvis. So now uh, the outer cannula is just screwed there into the pelvis. Now you can see after this the cannula is removed and the single step dilator is uh, advanced into the pelvis uh, using rotatory movement. So now you can see the, uh, the uh, ampullar sheath is also placed there. Now I am confirming my puncture. You can see when I am doing the scopy uh, you can see the mid posterior calicial infundibulum which is seen in front of you. You see that? This is the uh, infundibulum of the mid posterior calyx. Of course, the stone is seen in the pelvis and you can even see the mid anterior calyx which is seen down. So when you do a mid posterior calyx, the anterior calyces are seen in the dependent position. And of course, after this, the procedure is straightforward. Using the Holmium Yag laser, uh, the stone was uh, completely uh, ablated and this is the final picture after removal of the stone. So the take home messages are a mid posterior calyx is the shortest and the straightest path to the kidney and you have to locate this calyx to identify it. Uh, it is generally seen medial to the mid anterior calyx. You can use the C-arm to rotate from uh, 30 to uh, 0 degree to identify the orientation of this calyx uh, to the anterior calyx. Uh, generally a mid posterior calyx rotates medially when you turn the CM from 0 to 30 degree. Even sometimes an air pilogram helps because when once you inject this, since this calyx is in the, in the non-dependent position, air reaches this calyx and it is seen as a um, shadow uh, while doing RGP. Uh, this is how a mid-posterior calyxial puncture is done. Thank you.